Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how gyroscopes can sometimes actually lift themselves up opposing gravity seemingly. Now normally if you've ever played with a gyroscope, it looks like this. You get it spun up and then you support one end of it. And instead of just tipping over like what would normally happen if it weren't spinning, it actually starts spinning around in a circle. This is called precession. Now it seems logical to think that eventually gravity overcomes the gyroscope and eventually it falls over like we see here. If there were no friction involved whatsoever, the gyroscope would never actually fall over. It would just continually process around at that same rate forever. So why does the gyroscope eventually get lower and lower and lower and then fall off? The reason for that is because in order to stay up, the gyroscope has to process. If you ever stop the procession, it won't stay up anymore. I'm going to be using this gyroscope a lot. It's kind of hard to see what's happening. The top portion here spins and the bottom portion doesn't. So if I try to slow its procession, it drops. But if I try to speed up its procession, it raises. So the ability to process is what keeps it from tipping over. Even when it's pretty stable, it's still processing a little bit. And if I don't let it wiggle like that, it wants to fall over. But then give it a little push with its procession and it comes back up. So the reason a gyroscope initially processes is due to the force of gravity pushing down on it. And due to the angle of torque on it, it causes it to continually process around in a circle, not getting lower or higher. But when it starts to process around in a circle, there's always some friction at the base there. And so the base is applying some friction to it, which resists the procession. And you saw that whenever we resist the procession, it causes it to drop even lower. So the more you resist it, the lower it drops. So the only thing that causes the gyroscope to eventually tip over is the friction on the base, not gravity. Gravity is what causes it to process in a circle, and that does cause the friction, but the friction is what causes the procession rate to slow down, get resisted, and that causes it to drop down even lower. If you can reduce the friction of the procession, then you have another friction that starts to take an effect. And that friction is the friction of the actual spinning gyroscope. So the friction of this axis here. So on the spinning gyroscope, when you apply a force in the opposite direction of the spin, it actually causes it to process the opposite direction. So it causes the opposite effect of the friction due to precession. So the friction around the spinning axis causes the gyroscope to want to lift up. So watch this, I have a gyroscope with a very frictionless base that just spins on ball bearings. So it immediately starts processing. But now watch what happens. So it gets completely upright again. So how can I actually prove that it's the friction resisting the turning that's causing it to rise up in the air? Well, if I try to just give it some resistance like this, I'm actually stopping the procession as well, so it's gonna tip over. So I have to find a way to only slow down the spinning without stopping the procession. And the way I'm going to do that is just to put some tape on the gyroscope and get it spinning, and then I'm gonna just touch the tape and increase the resistance that way. So that will slow the spinning, but since it's flimsy tape, it doesn't have a way to stop the procession. So let's see if I just press on the tape while it's spinning, if it will actually cause it to rise up in the air. So that's pretty definitive. If you increase the friction of spinning, it causes it to rise up in the air. If you increase the friction of precession, it causes it to fall down. So it seems that there are two effects that can happen with a gyroscope. You drop it and it starts processing and it will either get lower and lower and lower and eventually fall over or you let it go and it'll get higher and higher and higher and eventually become stable at the top until it stops spinning and then falls over. So how does it decide what one it's going to do? 
Well, you have a balancing act between two frictions. The friction of precession around in a circle like this, and also the friction of the bearings in the spinning gyroscope. The friction that's causing the gyroscope to slow down actually makes the gyroscope get lifted up. But the friction that's stopping the gyroscope from processing is making it fall down. Now this friction that's resisting the turning of the gyroscope doesn't always cause it to tip upwards. It actually changes depending on whether it's pointed downward to start with or pointed upward to start with. For example, if we start our gyroscope facing downward like a top, then it will actually point the other direction pointing up. So the way you can kind of predict what your gyroscope is going to do is if it's going to have a hard time processing, it's going to eventually fall down. But if it can process really easily, but only has friction of the spinning bearings, then it's going to actually rise up. This is actually the same reason why a top rises, or when you spin an egg, it rises up on its end. It's actually the friction against the table that's causing it to rise up. Now, none of what I've explained here is intuitive at all. And in fact, none of it is even explained when you learn about gyroscopes most of the time in physics classes. It's actually very difficult to get a gyroscope to actually do what you're taught it's going to do. And I want to say thanks to my friend David for actually making this gyroscope and sending it to me. It's awesome. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.